So here's a quick example of what, um, what transmissions and receptions would look like. So what I've done here is I've discretized time, and I, I'm doing this in my, uh, in, my, uh, in my binary example of either releasing a molecule or not. So this would be time one, two, three, four, five, and everywhere there's a one, that's a time instant in which I release a molecule, and every time instant where there's a zero, I'm not doing anything. So that first molecule, let's say it's delayed this time. So in other words, there's a unit delay that arrives here. So my, my receiver would observe this, at least, at least from the perspective of the first molecule that would arrive here. So this is what I'm looking at. The second molecule, let's say it, it's delayed by two time instants. So it shows up here. The third molecule is delayed by one time instant. So it actually piles up here. So uh, these two transmissions arrive at the same time, and I see two molecules arrive here. This molecule, let's say, is delayed two time instants, so it shows up here. Oops. And this molecule, let's say, is not delayed at all, it arrives quickly, and so it shows up here. So in this example, my received vector looks like this. My, my transmitted vector was this, and my received vector looks like this. So now the question is, how do we decode? If this is what we saw, how do we get that back to what was transmitted? So it turns out this is where the problem starts to get very, very hard. If you have n particles, uh, n molecules, and so, yes? I have a question, sorry. Basically, so you're deciding what molecules you're sending because this you're not trying to explain what you're exploring here. That's right. So why don't you just send different molecules? So that's a good question. Um, if reason is that the problem becomes trivial. So if, um, if you're sending distinguishable molecules, um, one of the assumptions, uh, one of the, uh, the other background assumptions that I'm making that I didn't mention was that all of the molecules propagate independently, um, which is, uh, that's realistic. That's very realistic for Brownian motion. Um, if all of the molecules are distinct, then the receiver can so for instance, if they were all distinct, then for instance, this molecule, uh, I would know that uh, that's different from all of the other ones, so therefore I'd be able to trace it back to perhaps where it came from. In that case, the received signal, uh, if you think of these, the sequence of transmissions as a sequence of times, the sequence of, the sequence of ones as a sequence of times, the delay is the noise, so I have a certain transmission time plus a certain delay um, is, uh, and that's received here, and I can distinguish all of them. In fact, that's just an additive noise channel with uh, just a funny distribution of the noise. Um, so I've, uh, turns out that, that you can get uh, an upper bound rate capacity, but it's not, uh, I, perhaps I should have mentioned that to introduce this, um, that is, uh, I mean, that's, to a researcher, that's not super satisfying because that's a, that's a well-solved problem. The, the problem of the additive noise channel is, is, is fairly well understood. Um, so I, I, uh, so This is where I'm confused with the goal of the research. So if you want to come up with a communication scheme, there is one that you can analyze. Yes. I don't see why you should come up with a communication scheme where you don't know how to analyze them. Okay, that's a good point. So, um, what you can say is that um, if everything is distinguishable, that's an upper bound rate capacity. You can, you can definitely show that. Um, on the other side, the, the direction I'm going, and we're going to get there in a few slides, is that that's a lower bound. Um, I usually don't talk about this upper bound. I should, but uh, um, I don't talk about this as an upper bound because it's, it's, it's quite simple. But perhaps because it's simple, I should talk about it more. But even in the case where you distinguish the molecules, you can 
it's not, you're not just communicating based on the order, right? You're also communicating based on the time between the when the molecules are released. That's true. That's true. So, so it's not. It's not. Is that a trivial problem? It's not. Uh, It's an easier problem than Right, so it's not. I think it's much easier. You probably can get a lot more information on the types than on the timing. So yeah, yes. you get the work. Yeah, so, so, That's right. Okay, but, but if you're trying to compute the mass, the exact is probably yeah. not. But yeah, you, can, yeah. you can argue that the amount of. That's how large the alphabet yeah. is, too. Yeah. You can, yeah, so you can argue that. Uh, you can argue a number of things here. Uh, for one thing, since um, all of the particles. Trend, uh, Excuse me, since all of the particles propagate independently, um, distinguishable molecules actually separate into, uh, into independent channels. So in other words, if you have a library of molecules, uh, it doesn't make sense to use them just to distinguish certain time indices apart. What you would actually do is you would, you would treat them as independent channels. So in fact, this is the problem to solve. Um, um, the case of independent, uh, the, the case of distinguishable molecules boils down, uh, is, is uh, once this is solved, that, that case is also solved in the sense of independent channels. Um, yeah, so anyway, great question. The, the thing about this research is that, um, like I say, this is, this is a side project for me, so I don't have a huge amount of time to devote to this, but on the other hand, there are lots of interesting questions like that, um, and not all of them are completely well thought out. So 